Hello everybody, my name is William and welcome back to another Roblox Bee Swarm Simulator video where today I'm going to talk about all the mid-game masks and currently there are three mid-game masks, the honey mask, the bubble mask, and the fire mask and today I wanted to give you all like a bit of a, a guide on which one would be the best for you based off of what you currently have or overall in general you'll find out later in this video. Don't question why I wear hats in my videos, it's because my hair is a mess, I look like a gremlin. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't ask why there's a hat on my head indoors while I have studio lights and a camera pointed to my face. Don't ask, it's long story. All right, so pretty much the first mask I would like to talk about would be the honey mask because the honey mask is overall a really well-rounded mask and it's not, like, specifically for any hive. It's, uh, for all hives, really. Pretty much what this is, is this handsome mask is guaranteed to bring satisfaction into your life. It gives you 20 25% pollen, 25% pollen from bees, multiplies your capacity by 1.2, by 1.25, which is actually pretty good. It gives you 50% honey from tokens, 80 convert amount, 30 defense, and, well, 30% defense because they're running percentages, 15% bee ability rate, and the passive coin scatter. To craft this mask, it is not cheap, but it is, well, it's pretty cheap. It's like dirt cheap, just not the Home Depot dirt. That stuff, it, nothing compares to that. But anyways, so it's 9,900. 199 treats, so you can pretty much call that 10,000 treats, 50 oils, 25 enzymes, and 5 gold eggs, and 100 million honey. Now, for the level of players that are gonna get this mask, 5 diamond egg, or sorry, 5 gold eggs, is going to take you a long time. And I mean a very long time, because like 5 gold eggs, that's, that is super expensive for a, that's 250 tickets for a mid-game player, which is pretty expensive because you should be buying like event bees and saving tickets for other stuff stuff more useful um, than the honey mask or gold eggs. So I suggest you just save your gold eggs whenever you get one and until you get this honey mask. So the honey mask overall, I'd say is the most well-rounded right? So next up, we have the fire mask. So the fire mask says, ignite your mind to enhance your red bees, which, so this, this mask is more so around red bees instead of like just overall in general bees. So it multiplies your red pollen by 1.5, gives you 15% instant red conversion. It multiplies your capacity by 1.25 and grants you 50% instant flame conversion, which will be very helpful if in mid game, you happen to have a lot of demon bees, or maybe you have a few spicy bees because in mid game, you're at least going to have like one to three mythic bees, obviously, but you're not about to have like 15 like spicy bees, like a normal red hive, you know? It also gives you two red bee attack, which is pretty good. So this mask is definitely very good for fighting. It gives you 35% defense and 15% bee ability rate and the passive ability ignite. So, well, actually, before I show you what ignite does, I'm gonna show you what the, um, the honey mask ability does. So pretty much every 20th mark token converts pollen equal to 300% of your convert total into honey tokens and scatters them over the field. The cooldown is two minutes. So a mark token is one of these. A mark token is that thing that I just spawned right there. See how they pop up like little uh, sticks in the field with little circles around them? So it's gonna be really easy. So four more, and then it should happen um, and right about now. There we go. Now look at that. There's a bunch of honey tokens on the field. It converted a bunch of the pollen out of my capacity into honey tokens. Now I just recollect these honey tokens all like this. And there you go. I got 3.6 million honey from coin scatter. So if you do have the honey mask, I suggest you have the honeybee as well, like the gifted honeybee, because it grants you 1.5 times more honey from tokens. So that's about it for the honey mask. Moving on to the fire mask, right? So here's the ignite ability. This is what the fire mask looks like, by the way. It's pretty cool. This is honestly like one of my favorite mid-game masks. I'd say it is my favorite mid-game mask, honestly. So pretty much ignite. Oh boy, that is, I cannot see that in my, um, I'll just look it up on the wiki. Here we go. So the passive ability ignites, activates every 15th red ability token collected. When activated, it creates five flames in an X shape where the 15th red token is collected lasting for five seconds. The fire collects six red pollen, three white, white pollen, one blue pollen, and from the nine surrounding flowers each sec. The amount of pollen increased by 2% per red bee and 4% per gifted red bee the player has. Additionally, the fire deals 15 damage to nearby enemies per second, ignoring defense and critical damage. While standing next to the flame, the player will be granted flame heat. Ignite is granted by equipping the 
fire mask. So pretty much, it's not really an X shape. It's more of a plus shape, and it's only like five flames. Um, so I'm gonna quickly activate ignite. So we have one. Oh boy, this is gonna take forever because I do not have any red bees. Looks like we're pulling out the micro converters. I'm gonna actually get some red bees. Oh, I've got this thing. Let's see, can we get a gifted vector bee? No, of course not. Alrighty, and we only need one more red ability token, which we should get in just a second here. And there we go. There is the ignite ability. See, it's only five flames in a little bit of a plus sign. It doesn't really do much, but honestly, I don't know. Mid game players are probably gonna find the, the, the flame heat just a tad bit useful. Speaking of tads, let's move on to the bubble mask, which is a blue mask. Get, get, get the joke there. I said tads, and most people call tadpole bees tads. Here we have the bubble mask. The bubble mask costs 500 blueberries, 50 blue extract, 25 oils, 15 glitters, 100 million honey, and it harnesses the power of the sea to enhance your blue pollen gathering. I nearly said blue bubble gathering. So it multiplies your blue pollen by 1.5, gives you 15% instant blue conversion, multiplies your capacity by 1.5, and multiplies your bubble pollen by 2, which is actually incredibly helpful if you do have a lot of bubble bees or a few tadpole bees. Gives you 30% defense, 15% bee ability rate, and the passive ability is in fact called bubble bombs. I don't know why I said is in fact, because you guys probably knew that by reading it, because you guys have eyeballs. I don't, so pretty much this ability is activated. Every seventh bomb token spawns three bubbles on the field that lasts for eight seconds. If any player touches them, they pop, collecting three red pollen, five white pollen, 10 blue pollen, and in parentheses it states plus 15% per gifted blue type. So per gifted blue B type. It collects the pollen from 29 nearby flowers and causes them to fully replenish. So that's pretty handy, honestly. Fully replenishing, that's what normal bubbles in Bee Swarm does. So if you just have, you know, the regular bubbles, it works too. All right, here we go. And let's get one more bomb token and it should activate. So one bomb token. Where, oh, where is this one bomb token? It's just non-existent. There we go. One bomb token. Look at that. A bunch of bubbles just appeared on the field. Um, it's supposed to be three bubbles, but I have tadpole bees, so they spawn bubbles on their own. But collecting bubbles, it gives you a bunch of pollen and replenishes the flowers fully. So this can be useful in cases where your sprinklers do not fully replenish the field, because I know in mid game, the sprinklers are terrible and you normally would ask like an end game player to drop you a supreme saturator. Most of the time they don't because I've learned that from experience. So in the end, which mask is the best in general and which mask is the best for you? So personally, I'd say the best mask in general would be the honey mask. So I'd say get the honey mask first, right? Why I say this is because notice it does not have a specific color pollen. It doesn't multiply white pollen, red pollen, or blue pollen. It multiplies pollen itself. And the stats overall, I'd say are much better than all the other stats, like on the other mid game masks. See these stats? These are much better than the bubble mask, the fire mask, they're much better. So personally, I think this is the most well-rounded and best in general. However, if you are doing a stick bug challenge or an ant challenge, it is very handy to have the fire mask. So I suggest you use the fire mask if you are using it to, uh, to fight things. Like if you're in a boss fight or something like that, you can use the fire mask to get that plus two red bee attack, which is very handy. Or maybe if you're doing a red field boost, you might want to wear this fire mask because it will help out a ton with the red pollen multiplier. So if you are doing a red field boost, I suggest you put on the fire mask. Now, the bubble mask. This one's a bit of a confusing one. I'd say this is the least useful mask out of the three. Personally, I'd say get the honey mask, then the fire mask, and then the bubble mask if you don't already own an end game mask, because by then you might actually own an end game mask, which would be pretty cool. Now, only use the bubble mask if you're doing a blue field boost, but other than that, that's all. That's all. It's really useless compared to the other two masks. So, honestly, I'm sorry, bubble mask. It is by far just, it, it's so, it is, it, Beautiful, right? So it's like, it's it's amazing looking, right? It's adorable, but it's useless. So yeah, that's about it for today's video, guys. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any opinions over these three masks, please leave them in the comments below. I almost slurred over that sentence. My bad, I'm very tired. Um, But yeah, so I hope you all found this very helpful. And I'll see you all in the next Roblox Beast Worm Simulator video or any other video that I publish. Goodbye!